Okay, and now without any further ado, and I'd like to welcome Prime Minister to begin the quarterfinals. Here, here. Thank you, Chair. So the up and uh, up or out system is a system or a culture in a certain work workplace, especially in the professional fields, that says that if you can't do something, if you can't achieve your milestones, you should leave, or the uh, reward for achieving it is going up. Now I'm going to be very clear that what what we are going to depend on us of the house is a more flexible system where we can either go up or out, or down, or stay in that position. That's what we're going to do next. You think that these kind of systems are widely uh, appreciated and is in effect in other, com other companies, especially in places like manufacturers, uh, especially in, other, like in anything, in retail or anything. I think it is a common practice that we know what it is all about. Now, I'm going to talk about three things. Firstly, I'm going to talk about the unique exploitative nature of this up or down system. Secondly, I'm going to talk about why we think this is likely to lead to a better working place. And lastly, I'm going to talk about productivity. Firstly, about the unique exploitative nature of this system. Now, there is, when you have to go out of a job, it means basically you are fired or you are implicitly forced to leave a job because you are not going up. So you're seen as a, like an obstacle, a stumbling block in your workplace that nobody really wants to talk, talk about or touch you. And that forces uh, that imposes uh, pressure on you to leave. Now the thing is, there is a unique cost of leaving, especially in this field. First of all, because when you lose your job, basically, you, it's really hard to find another job. They may say that this is a professional field. You can obviously find other jobs, but this is not true. We think that, the, especially the professional field, is largely being taken uh, taken over by the AIs. For example, if you are a lawyer, the big part of your work, working hours is to look through uh, and read through contracts made by your clients and spot out the different, uh, spot out problems, spot out uh, like the advantages of doing it, suggesting the other way, ways to change it so that it's preferable to you, or con uh, like suggesting contradictions within different clauses. AI is much higher in terms of precision and speed and all that, and in fact, these things are actually being uh, um, in the market uh, as a service, and a lot more companies are actually switching into it, rather than um, like consigning that legal job to a legal firm. In finance, like your job is to look through like the financial account of your client and say that this is okay or not in terms of the financial laws, whether it is a, a compliant to no. what the law suggests. No, sit down. We think also this is actually better if the AI looks through all the data, databases of case studies and say that this is like 70% safe or 80% safe or whether you should definitely not, not take that option and all these kind of things. Secondly, we think that even if you are to find a job, you are seen as a person who, you, who lost in the competition in your last, last job. We think that is actually uniquely uh, like pernicious to your your ability to find another job. Lastly, we think that like leaving a job means that you have to pay taxes in next year. You are having a very relatively high pay job, meaning that the tax tax next year is going to be really high. So that's another motivation for you to stick stick into your job. That's the cost you have to pay of out. Now, why do we think that this is very harmful? We think that precisely because achieving milestones is very, very hard in terms of these jobs. Because firstly, I think there are high bars set. Like when you have an up or down system, especially in a hierarchical system where the jobs above you are limited in seats, um, we think that the company has an incentive to set ultimately very high bars because they don't want many, too many candidates applying for it. So that's the motivation on the the house. Secondly, we think that your milestones are very, um, not really um, codified. I think like it's not like you work, you're working as an engineer saying that, oh, I'm going to reduce cost by 10% by raising productivity by 10%. It's really up to the, uh, the project, up to the client, who may change, uh, like, uh, change requirements all, all of a sudden because they feel like it for random reasons. These things, no, I... things happen and it's really difficult to uh, uh, achieve your codified uh, achievements, yes. Let's say there are two levels in a company. If most people in level two go out, there are many positions open in level two. So most people in level one cannot go out, they go up. 
uh, we don't necessarily think that is true, but people would compete to, uh, uh, the, the, the thing is, even if you don't go up, we think there is a unique competition that leads to exploitation, this is multiple point. Now, we think that you have to overwork in order to achieve milestones. You have to, uh, to pretend you're liking a job, and you have to pretend like you have your, uh, you're being a good, uh, good serviceman within that company. And that leads to uh, like huge mental depression, because you always are after like, uh, like deadlines, and you have, you're always checked by your bosses, and you often find it leads to psychological pressure, leaving you, uh, leaving you with like mental disorders like depression and all these kind of things. Also, it's often very difficult for you to comply with the standards. Again, like you have other life events, like you may become ill, you may become, uh, you, your, your parents, all the parents may just become ill and all that kind of things. You have to sacrifice sometimes, sometimes of, of your family work in order to comply with, uh, with your job. Also, this is very burdensome for the individuals and that's psychologically uh, like, uh, killing you to a certain extent. Now, why do we think that on our side of things, our side we get better? Uniquely, because you have the option to stay. You don't have to face all this pressure and pay the cost of leaving. And that is something, that, that, that is the only time when you have the ability to reconcile your passion for work and get the right amount of compensation. Also, we think that when we have more people staying, your, the company starts to invest in systems which allow you to stay, like childcare leaves or like, uh, like uh, short -hour work hours. So, and all these kind of things happen, and that's why we think that things are likely to get better on our side of the house. Lastly, in terms of productivity, because I know that the opposition is probably going to tell, tell us that there's going to be severe competition and that raises productivity. First of all, I think that competition is likely to come in very unhealthy ways. Like, like uh, in order to go up, especially when the milestones are very not codified, what happens is that you start to like do weird things in your uh, weekends. Like, for example, um, your boss's boss who is going to appoint you as the uh, next person in the, in the hierarchy. Uh, you probably like, uh, t you spend your weekend going golfing, golfing with them, or like, uh, for example, babysitting their kids and all that kind of things, which is not necessarily a healthy way you're competing, so productivity loss. Secondly, we think that when you, uh, you have a lot of people uh, uh, like, uh, being overworking and very tired, um, like, um, like drink coffee all day and then have, having a caffeine shot every, every uh, 30 minutes or so, I don't think these people are very productive workers in the first place. But thirdly, we think, we think that when people just randomly just say that I'm fed up, I can't bear it anymore, and they become depressed, they leave the job suddenly, what happens is that you have to appoint another person from another project into it. This person is already probably very busy. You probably can't necessarily have all this uh, time to, uh, to, uh, for, for the, this person to catch up. We don't necessarily think that it's really productive in terms of the company's work as a total. For all these reasons, we think that much is that. Thank you. Speaker, 658. All right, now I'd like to welcome the leader of opposition to begin the opposition case. Here, here. to get promoted. There is no clear standard of whether or not or when you will get promoted to begin with. When seniority becomes the only thing that determines whether you get promoted or not, we think that's, uh, that is the world that we regret. So, a couple of things to say. Firstly, I'm going to do the response. Secondly, I'm going to do the setups. Uh, thirdly, I'm going to talk about why you get much uh, better, uh, much better treatment for the workers. Lastly, I'm going to talk about why they're going to improve, improve the efficiency of the site. Firstly, a couple of setup, a couple of uh, like uh, responses, right? I think the biggest claim from the government is to say that oftentimes it leads to the exploitation for a lot of workers that get laid off, right? I think a couple of uh, responses here, right? Number one, I think that when they say AI can do some kind of professional jobs, one, it's quite symmetric, right? If they want to defend that people can leave whenever they want the world, oftentimes the AI can also do these jobs, it's quite symmetric to begin with. But 
But secondly, I think that a lot of time these uh, professional jobs do require certain amount of like working experiences, right? For instance, AI cannot do a lot of the uh, like lawsuits or certain kind of things. You can not, you can see that they are not developed to that extent, and also they cannot take the accountability when you're doing fi financing or doing the accounting, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, right? So we do think that working experiences are valued in these kind of areas and are to some degree ha they have the kind of leverage to opt into other opportunities to, uh, to begin with, right? But secondly, we say that they are kind of like uh, not knowing that what kind of this, the whole system actually looks like, right? When we say that when the whole system are established, the problem, the reason why, for instance, why a lot of the old people cannot actually opt into other companies is because there's no platform, for instance, established for them because there are a limited number of people in the workforce, uh, in the kind of labor market to begin with, right? But we say that under the system that we provide to you, when there is a huge amount of people that who are elderly and who have this kind of working experiences, these companies also have the kind of incentive to provide, pro provide them with a kind of a platform to actually opt in, to, pro to provide them, for instance, the transitioning uh, training for them to actually catch up with all the things that they say, right? That's a world that we defend. So, first they set up, why do we think that necessarily is going to be, uh, how do we think that uh, the world at our side house actually look like, right? Number one, we think that the milestone is highly likely to be quite reasonable to begin with, right? Because these, these companies are not stupid, right? They want to incentivize people to work there to begin with, right? They want them to actually fill the hole. They want them to feel the company is good because they also have to face competition coming from other companies, right? Uh, in, in the market, right? For instance, they have to offer better treatment for those uh, for those uh, workers uh, to attract them, even if it, it, they are in the kind of like system. They have to provide them reasonable milestones for them to actually perceive. They, they cannot overburden them and make them feel that they, they are not able to achieve that milestone so that they were not all into that to begin with, right? But secondly, right, we say that oftentimes this happens most likely to be in the middle or uh, bottom or uh, mid middle level when the majority of the cases that people do can feel the hope of moving to the uh, moving uh, uh, moving to the top or moving <coughs> to the middle to begin with, right? But thirdly, I think that oftentimes, uh, oftentimes, uh, like, we, we think that the co companies are highly likely to build a system that's going to rely less rely less on the kind of individuals to begin with right? when you have that system, right? For instance, they're probably going to create the information sharing system to make sure even if you have some level of like working years there, it's highly likely that for instance, that the company do have the information sharing system to like make sure that others can directly catch up with the kind of like work that you have to begin with, right? So we think that at the end of the day, it's, it, at the end of the day, it means that we're going to have like better treatment for the workers. We're not going to make them quite miserable when they actually opt into other market. And also we're going to make a system that is likely for the companies to actually um, catch up, even if someone uh, leaves, leaves, right? So, second thing to say here, why do we think that necessarily is going to be much better for the workers to begin with, right? Number one, we think that there's much more fluidity inside the companies, right? Which means that there are more position opening inside the companies, right? For instance, a lot of young people can now perceive the opportunity for them to climb up the ladder, climb up the ladder, and become certain, uh, become like higher positions, when they actually do feel the hope, it's highly likely to going to promote the kind of efficiency and promote the kind of like the hope that they have towards certain jobs to begin with, right? But secondly, sorry, secondly, I think that they're much likely to get better treat, treated by their, uh, by their uh, like, upper positions, right? For instance, now we think that the competence or in terms of what achievement you have become determined, determined in terms of whether you get promoted or not versus at their world, seniority is the only thing that they actually prioritize, right? It looks like it's hard for you to actually question the age of an individual while you can directly question whether your upper, uh, like, like your uh, bosses have the competence or not, right? It's highly likely that you, they are they are likely to have like more say in terms of whether uh, whether they're they're kind of like the uh, bosses treat them good or not, right? But secondly, their bosses actually have like more cooperation incentive to co cooperation, right? For instance, they do care about whether they can uh, they can actually become successful in their project, which means that they're highly likely don't don't want to piss off their subordinates for them to actually become successful in their next project to begin with. Sorry, uh, but se thirdly, I think that nowadays now workers have like much better opportunities uh, outside, right? For instance, previously you have to stay somewhere and have like the sunk cost for 10 years because you don't know uh, your milestone in terms of whether you'll get promoted or not, right? But we think that at our, at our side house, you directly know there's a milestone. You di can directly evaluate the standard in terms of whether you can get promotion or not, right? We think that the reason why a lot of people stay in the position, stay in the kind of companies that they do not like to begin with, is that when, even if they feel there's exploitation, they cannot leave because there are already the sunk costs that they actually invest in these companies to begin with, right? We think that at our world, when you have a very clear standard in terms of whether you get um, you, you will get promoted or not, you're highly likely that you're going to have like, better opportunities outside. What's the point? So, 
on north of the house, a lot of old people do not have to go up, they can stay, which means that you are, uh, you can question them because they're not necessarily like the, old, the people at the top. Yes, that's exactly the disadvantage that we talked to. But lastly, uh, but lastly, right, we think that it's better for the workers because now you can see more young people getting into the management, uh, management position in a way that we think that's generally going to be better because they're more exposed to the uh, liberal social media because like, they believe in more of the liberal things. They are less conservative. They're probably going to have like, like, more gender-friendly policies. They're probably going to have like, more efficient practices or innovative ideas get promoted. Uh, there, uh, we think that's generally better for the workers to begin with. But secondly, it's also going to be better for the whole uh, society as a whole, right? Firstly, it's better for the economy because it actually promotes the kind of like culture of innovation, the culture of talent to begin with, right? For instance, previously when you have like seniorities, uh, seniority as the prioritization, a lot of times people are not able to actually make the kind of like risky risky uh, decision, right? And oftentimes they want the stable, the stable like position of their own, which means that they're not, if they, they have to be like risk averse and they, they don't actually want the innovative idea to begin with, right? But secondly, right, the, the whole labor market, uh, the whole labor market are not willing to hire other individuals because there are not a uh, amount of fluidity inside, right? Now you get have that system inside, you're going to enable more opportunities, you're going to enable more efficiency for people to actually, perform, actually find suitable jobs and more opportunities for the stigmatized group like minorities and the women at the end of the day, based on all of that verb culture. Okay. We thank the LL and I'd like to welcome DPM. Continue the proposition. Okay, here, here. Okay, thank you, everybody. Two things to say. First of all, let me deny that premise. In our side, it's not necessarily a seniority system. Even if it's not a system, it's better, stability, large work works, it's okay. Secondly, on their side, very high bar to achieve such a kind of milestone. This will make pressure for the individual to sacrifice your own dedication, your own life work burdens, your own like energy to the over exploitation, because that is more pernicious. First of all, our counterfactual. Framing here is that, first of all, I want to deny seniority system in our society. We say productive working with good respect for the ability of individuals exists anyway to some extent. Three reasons. Firstly, because worker can pursue up without so much pressure of out on our side. Right? The people have natural incentive to be recognized well. People have natural incentive to get super good income by promoting exist. And this is people have incentive to up even if you are young. Secondly, like they want to feel superiority because you're human, biological art to be superior to the others. Those people, for example, like a consultant or those kind of individuals, are already getting used to some experience of like competition, like studying examination whatsoever. In that sense, there's natural incentive to work exists without so much out. Thirdly, they want to avoid the stigmatization because you are lazy, you don't work, you are not cooperative. That will be creating very strong stigma that might deny your identity, that might make you not to have not, not so much friends, not a socially good person. In a sense, there are natural incentives for people to productively working from the perspective of young people and the old people. This implicates that younger people, if they work productively, they can be up they can get good position. No, this means that it's not necessarily in the ordinary system. Even if stay exists, that stay people, even if they are older like me, that people, if not so much productive, they will stay, not have the power. Then the liberal idea of young people will be like exist, then they can change those kind of corporate structure from the top. Those kind of things exist. Therefore, their fundamental premise of senior system in the first place does not make sense. Secondly, we say, uh, uh, why? 
So if people have the natural incentive to be superior, won't exploitation and toxic competition exist on both sides of the house? Okay. I don't think so. Because, because that, as a, you have to listen to our speech about how out power is very strong to overwhelmingly pressurize you uh, to not the inability of uh, having another job or like just, just being depression or something like that. It's extremely strong. Therefore, in this sense, it's a productive life of balance. It doesn't make sense. This is our counterfactual premise. Then, why this context is very good, I have four reasons. Firstly, workers can enjoy working without strong pressure about. You can dedicate yourself in the working if you like to. Then, you can have enjoy. Secondly, life work balance are likely to be respected on our side because you don't sacrifice yourself too much. This means that oh, you can have some room to enjoy hobby, like debating or something like that, which is the proximate interest of you, right? In that kind of situation, even if you suffer temporarily in the working, you can to some extent escape to the hobby, and you can both do that. Especially when this is important. Life is dynamic. You want to initially de 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 devote yourself into work. But you might change your lifestyle, you might get married, you might have another experience, then it may make you change your attitude, change your incentive. Then we can flexibly cater to demand. You can work, enjoy, you can work flexible, happy. This is very good. Thirdly, like, uh, uh, also, uh, this is very important, like, uh, um, grass seeding or something like that. Women, for, if they have married, they want to enjoy bringing up children, those kind of things also. This is the example, okay? Good, good to intuition, right? Then, thirdly, on our side, like flexible structural changes on our side wanting environment to happen because more people can recognize the necessity of life, life and the life work balance system, more people will stay that, they can voice out more. In that kind of situation, that voice will reach to the top of people who are likely to be liberal, and those people will give them power. Fourthly, even if we support our seniority system, it's good because seniority system represents stability. You, if it's the you know, system, more people stay. This means that you don't have to, in, initial investment towards a new member will be decreased, right? If a new member exists in your corporation, you have to try to in, uh, educate those kind of individuals by talking, by like having, giving them information, giving them a PC or something like that. By doing this, that your corporation capacity, financial capacity, or like those kind of things will be mitigated. But on the side, because of the seniority system, less like flexibility of the corporation, that cannot be, uh, that will not waste it. Therefore, that stability makes sense. Okay, then let's move on to our argument about high power and the uncontrollability of out that will be tremendous harmful. First of all, let me clarify our context. Why this will be high power? Government tried to respond to that. Oh, company will be reasonable because another company exists. Therefore, you want to offer good treatment. This incentive exists, but they can do this by enhancing benefits, even if this cooperation, to some extent, very pressurized to work, even this competition of this cooperation is strong, but this pays off. You can get promotion if you work harder, then you can be successful. Actually, this boss is successful. Therefore, even if a bit hard environment exists in this cooperation, but you can do this. This kind of like treatment looked better. In that kind of situation, this will necessarily um, irrationalize those people to opt into. Then, why high bar of money my story exists? Three structural reasons. First, with survival bias exists. People on the top of top hierarchy will offer that kind of milestone to the subordinate, right? And then that top person already experienced the competition, already successfully experienced that they are winning. In this sense, they think that, oh, people can do this, I could do this, then they have incentive to impose that kind of idea to the subordinate. Secondly, alternative worker exists because the consensus of the, of this debate is that the profession of the consultant is the popular job high kind of impact, right? In that kind of situation, you can have a potential good worker in your side. That, that's why they can strongly negotiate, strongly offer higher achievement. Thirdly, like the point of view is different. Time constraint. All the people don't ex expect the difficulty of current situation of working because of the coronavirus, the online situation, because of the AI flourishment, difficulty of taking clients, or such kind of, such kind of thing. Then there's structural difficulty for assume what is high bar, low bar. Therefore, this will be high bar. Therefore, our harm makes sense. Secondly, even if bar is small, it's difficult to control everything. Anything will happen, like client may change their incentive or economical recession, like Corona exists, family environment might change, you have a quarrel with the wife or like your family might get the disease. In that kind of situation, even if you are skillful, you cannot achieve good progress or working, right? In this sense, you are unjustly out. We say this is very pernicious to me, the boys. Now, like.
to welcome the DLO to continue the opposition case. Here, here. I think that debating is often a useful metaphor for life. For some team to advance to semifinals, some team must lose out. For some worker to go up, someone else must go out. Otherwise, there is simply no position open and no position available. What young people fear is not that they're expected to work hard and compete. As per DPM's own analysis, what young people have is a natural incentive and urge to compete. What young people fear and what makes them hopeless <coughs> is that there are no opportunities open for them, is that power is perpetuated and maintained by those who have seniority, by those who have experience, but that there are no positions available for the newcomers in society. Two things in the speech then. Firstly, why this is better for workers, and finally, why this is better for society. On workers, I want to talk about three things. Firstly, we tell you that this will largely improve the environment in which you work and the culture of the workplace. And the mechanism we give you is very simple. There are uniquely more promotion opportunities on our side. Gov's response to this is, we can have a up, down, or stay system. The reason why this doesn't work is that people in higher positions of power have very limited opportunities to go further up. Therefore, they have the priority to maintain their own positions. They don't want to go out, and they offer them a very simple mechanism of just staying where they are and not opening this position up to people that are uh, that are lower than them on the career ladder, on the hierarchy within the corporation. Only when you force people at the top out can you offer opportunities for people at the bottom to go up. This is why promotion opportunities are unique to our side of the house, whereas on their side, it takes significantly longer periods of time for a higher position to open up, which is why they prioritize seniority, seniority more by definition, because you, it just takes you much, much longer for a position to open up, and the criteria for that becomes much more arbitrary. The impact of this is massive, as we told you. First of all, having younger people in higher positions of power in the corporate ladder is a huge advantage. It means they're more like in touch with contemporary thought. They're more likely to innovate, to utilize technology, to adopt advanced, uh, advanced and modern management techniques. No, thank you. It also means they're likely to foster a friendly work environment simply because the culture they're exposed to is substantially more liberal, substantially more welcoming for women, for gender minorities and sexual, uh, and sexual minorities. Secondly, we tell you that young people are now substantially happier because although they do see some fear of having, uh, of having to be replaced by someone else, what they see crucially is hope that doesn't exist on their side of the house. On the comparative, what they see is that they have to wait for five or ten years down the line before one position finally opens up because some manager dies of old age. What they see is that there is no chance for promotion on their side of the house. And no thank you. And desperation is precisely what young people fear because young people, as they characterize, like competition, what they do not like is that there's nothing they can compete for. They have two main pushes to this claim. Firstly, they say there's a greater chance of you getting fired, and getting fired is bad. Firstly, I just want to engage with their reasons why getting fired is bad. Number one, they say you're seen as a loser. But on our side, where a large number of people are fired in the professional service area, this perception weakens because it demonstrates that it's not that you're a loser, it's just that other people are out competing you in one company. That doesn't mean you cannot succeed in another company in a different context, in the context where the majority of people, or like 50 to 20% of the people, have to seek another job to begin with. Secondly, they say AI replaced workers. That is obviously symmetric. People will use AI to replace workers on both sides of the house. Why is getting fired a better thing for our side of the house? Number one, because companies hire more people on our side of the house, so the harm of being unemployed structurally in the long run is mitigated on our side. Number one, when you fire more people, you have more positions open, so you have to hire more people. Number two, there's more willingness to hire more people on our side of the house because you can fire them very easily. On their side, there's the easy option of just staying in the company. On our side, when they're incompetent, you can fire them, which is why, oh, no thank you, on our side of the house, you're much more willing to offer minorities, to offer relatively old people, uh, a chance to engage in the workforce, a second chance to restart at your company. But furthermore, we tell you that on our side of the house, because workers are likely more competitive, workers are, are, are more productive, there's a better corporate performance, which means you prevent the possibility of mass layoffs because your company is outcompeted by all the other companies. Therefore, less people get fired, and the people that do get fired get better treatment on our side. No, thank you. 
Finally, their push is on exploitation. I have three responses to this. The first response is that exploitation is limited and symmetric in three ways. Number one, burnout of workers decreases productivity. At the point where you spend no time with your family, you also have less ability to fulfill the KPI when you literally are burnt out and cannot work any further. Rest is conducive to work, and managers often do not overwork people for these reasons. Number two, there are labor laws that exist in the, in the majority of countries in the world that we talk about where these professional services do exist. Number three, as DPM point out, exploitation is likely symmetric because there is the natural incentive to be superior, to outcompete others, etc., etc. Second response is to flip this argument and say that exploitation is worse on their side for two reasons. Number one, the prerequisite of exploitation is that the manager has substantial authority, is that the image of the manager is glorified as a respectful old person with lots of experience that you cannot stand up against. It is on their side of the house where people are pressured into not leaving the company until the old experienced manager leaves because they have more experience than you and they're older than you. That weakens on our side of the house. Number two, as we told you, there's less accountability for managers on their side of the house because managers face less supervision and examination. Uh, managers have less incentive to work hard at the point where they don't feel the threat of being fired. It is on our side where they care about what workers think. Number three, on our side of the house, when there's exploitation, as we've shown you, there's more capacity to leave and go for another company in the worst cases. Before I move on, yes. Uh, the difference between debate competitions and real life is that a lot of middle-aged people want to go down because they want to care about the family. Our case allows you to go down and get relatively good payment as well as balancing out your needs with your families. No, 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 but at the point where middle-aged people are allowed to just stay, they don't want to go down, right? Which is why, you know, you have to have some criteria which is basically the same as our side of the house to push middle people, uh, to push like old or middle-aged people out of the system. At that point, I think your case is very, very soft. Finally, on way, even if there's more exploitation and people work harder, we think the benefits they reap and the benefits they provide for society is more important. The first way in here is that more promotion opportunities and more money for young people outweighs working longer hours because you probably have to spend the majority of your life in the workplace anyways. The difference is 10 hours, 8 hours versus 12 hours. The bigger difference is how much money you make and what house you see yourself buying in the next 10 years. The second way metric is, on our side, there's a more friendly work environment that is welcoming of all people that has less exploitation and more accountability of managers. The way metric is very simple. As we told you, these are professional fields that you often can opt out of and you have to spend the majority of your time working in a company anyways. What matters is how good the company is, is how friendly the environment is, rather than how many hours you have to work. For all these reasons, very happy to oppose. Okay, now I'd like to welcome the government whip. Here, here. Position is 
uh, more higher their position become, I think the amount of the work they have to carry, the amount of responsibility they have to carry is more, more heavy, right? Which means that, so if there's some pressure, if we, they are, I don't know, particular age, if they feel that some psychological difficulty to take trade off with that, I think they're more likely to, like, I know there are less incentive to, they st strongly speak to their position, right? I think the women are more likely to be, I don't know, can, can be more easy on the path. But also secondly, I think corporations incentives to increase the quality of la labor forces in ecosystems also remain on the path, right? Because it is important, we are talking about skills consultants or lower, lower, like, low, for, for example, still the industry which subscribes professionalism or importance of the quality of the work, quality of the uh, labor force, etc. Right? Which means that I think still, if some, I don't know, the stupid both still remain, I think corporations have less, much more incentive to lower, lower the, their position, you know, or other, so up, um, up invite the more uh, competent younger, younger actor, you know, the higher position because they subscribe this culture, right? The second way, I think even if the upper out, I think the promoting young is any any way difficult on their side anyway, right? So first of all, I think they, they see that, for example, both the incentives to stay and so not the inviting that and not, not promoting the young because they do not want to, uh, because they want to, they do not want to help. I think this incentive is, I think it, it, I think it is symmetrically applicable to opposition program. But secondly, the opposition say the young can have hope, but I think it is unlikely because for the young, I think young is a like, particular position which the, for, like, for the young, achieving the initial part of milestone, initial part of the first is it, very difficult. For example, achieving the first promotion is, is very difficult, right? Because they are unexperienced, they have much of things, much of tasks to do, which means that I think on, on their side, it, particularly when they feel great difficulty for the first time of their like how to the necessity to fulfill the milestone, but still they force to win win this competition, they force to achieve that more competitive, more stressful way, right? I think the more rather leads to more disappointment or lose of helplessness because in order to promote that, we have to like over like this degree of task, this degree of challenges very burden, right? I think rather is like uh, rather more likely more ease the pressure, um, not, not ease the pressure. I think this more healthier way of competition is more rather likely to hope because the more view, more future view. <laughs> the that efforts they have to take more visible, more accessible on the first half. So the second is why pressure work it, it's pressured over no, it, it especially stands out. Yes. So do you think most executives and managers in the status quo are young people or old people? Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know because eh? mm, so I don't know I, I don't know beyond the upper corporate. So sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> secondly, so why pressure so why pressure over especially stands. So the counter claim coming from the opposition is that but still milestone this harder can be accessible because first because so, uh, so they say the milestone can be reasonable. But I think firstly the nuance our nuance is that it's unclear. Even if milestone sound reasonable but practically difficult to achieve, right? Because even if it's some reasonable does not necessarily mean that it's accessible, right? Because my partner already told you the corporation have corporation have the incentive to set this higher because they have to differentiate the people who can be up with the limited position and who and not no, no. who exclude the people who are incompetent, right? It's necessarily, in order to maintain the quality, they are more, more and more and more incentive to more set work higher. But the world of secondary, even if it's reasonable one, as they say, but I think still our mechanism of some constant input pressure subjective firm still exists, right? Because so first of all, they have my, my partner told you that for example the uh, like worker have to be continuously demand this like potential more necessity of the I don't know perfect this milestone, right? For example, weekly checking with course, they like, so they constantly pre like asking you, for example, to what extent you can fulfill the level your, your future will reflect, etc. Right? So even if it might so easy to feel some reasonable, but this kind of constant pressure makes like some your milestone unreasonable in subjective view, right? I think this this psychological perception change is also remaining as a mechanism. But secondly, I think the need to be comparative, this pressure still exists because milestone into self is reasonable. For example, getting B plus or A evaluation from the boss. But I think process is very unclear, right? For example, to get evaluation, to get more better customer satisfaction, for example, you have to fulfill the check sheet, for example, whether you have the a video presentation or a conversation, etc. Since it is really still arbitrary, a room for the spectrum, but you have to internalize the necessity to be more superior or superior to others, I think their in degree of internalization more stronger on their self -help. So that's where I think even if that objectively reasonable, but sub sub subjectively, the degree of the internalization of fit pressure is still amplified on their self -help. So this, so, okay. So other conclusions, so as, as, as my partner told you, I think still overall is more likely to occur. They say that, and, and so opposition pushback is that, like the more, less account, so 
this accountability on their on our side. But I think it's until in terms of accountability, I think more more likely to work on their on their side of the house because they both can justify the pressure in them, right? For example, if you can be one of the education, it will be a necessity for for young to more grow up or, or grow up or level up your skill, right? So be or like they say that that you know for the perfect records, that if your yeah your young is no, it, it can be out. It can be related to the I don't know your in a in a coach's inability to like develop the younger skill, etc. Right? Which means that they are more likely to justify or making excuse for the too much pressure or I don't know checking the constantly asking your like, ta like quality of task, etc. Right? So, so that's why right. I, I think this this data is very important because since the in the case of a young engineer, like internally, the like, cost of out is so huge. I think they, they have to necessarily fall in this pressure, and so with the pressure, I think it's very important, so particularly the young, who, I don't know, they, this, this experience is to be evaluated from other corporations. Changing corporations is very difficult, right? They have to necessarily prioritize the staying of this corporation. So that's why right. I think it's how it's more like especially with that and very, very impactful rather than, I don't know, young with promotion, if it's I, I mean, it, it, anyway, possible or not, so you know, not measuring it, which is very big, so proud to do for Okay, now I'd like to welcome the op with student, one of the things that I recognize is that the major law firms in Japan astonishingly see senior leadership and senior partnership occupied by male, old, conservative, toxic cultures. We think that we want to break this and bring young blood, invigorate that into the corporate structure. Um, I'll talk about three things. Firstly, on why young workers are much beneficial. I'll actually give you a way as to why young people matter more than old people responding to their age. Secondly, I'll talk about why what happens to all unproductive workers. Finally, I'll talk about the comparative. All that other things is important. Firstly, on young workers. All right, so why do we think that the young people among young workers are substantially more important actors in this debate? We suggest two main mechanisms. The first is that, particularly in the 20s and early 30s, are the most important time in your life. It is the time that you meet people, you meet potential partner for the rest of your life. It is the time that you build CVs and build your career from the later point in your life. Which means that the, the inability to gain promotion is very significant in these instances. For example, if you are a worker working at the Panasonic in the 1990s, what you would face is that you would work for the same company for 10 years but realize that there is no promotion position at the end. But when you become 30s, you have no opportunity or you don't have an incentive to leave out of the company because you feel that you've already spent 10 years of your life in that environment and there's a sound cost biases such that you're not able to move out of that corporate structure. That means you're locked into an environment in a company that you don't really want. You're locked into essentially a prison of corporation. We think that is far worse compared to old people who've already experienced, who've already formed their you know, families, for instance, this is a far more important actor. Secondly, Promotion creates financial benefits that are unique to young people. We would suggest that, particularly in the early tw 20s and 30s, you have a lot of important spending. Like, for example, childcare is very important. For example, education in kids require immense amount of money. By contrast, if you're talking about 50 years old or 60 years old, firstly, we would point out this context of professional, like, services like if you're a lawyer and you're 60 years old i can promise you have a lot of savings in your account i promise i can i can promise that they're you know saving money in index funds and stuff right so i don't think it is like laying off is a substantial impact here i would also suggest that from the point of you know when you become really old you have welfare system that they can support you uh, we think generally speaking these old people are less important compared to us young people all right Second, so what are the impacts to young workers? Firstly, we explain the mental health condition. Because as DPM says, DPM is right. Young people will still need to work in companies for the reason that they identify for the biases. But the comparative is the lack of capacity to get promotion. Because no matter how hard you work, and you have to work either way, but you cannot get any opportunity. You have no hope for the future. Every day you do the same meaningless task as like at the bottom chain of the corporation without any prospect of potential future for the better condition in the future. We think this hopelessness con 
continuously does this like, for a very long period of time. Like, work, you, you spend most of your time in workplace for these workaholic people, right? And you spend this time thinking about how hopeless you are, how just like you don't have any bright future. There's an immense amount of mental harm that compounds over time that is significantly important here. Comparatively, on their side of the house, these like old people I would suggest, like, you know, like this motion only applies when like you want to sign up for a promotion, right? Like you actually consent into these processes, but young people don't actually consent into the processes where they don't have any opportunity to get promoted. Secondly, we explain that the corporate culture becomes much more friendly to minority. And this is something that government with completely drops. Like we expect young people have liberal mindsets when you have a bunch of old people inside the company. And this is true even if you assume the comparative on their side has, like in the mid where you like, you, you know, you, some old people go down, even then, if the vast majority of workers are old people who oftentimes form old boys club, right? You go on golfing on weekends and then you make sexist comments without any accountability. These are incredibly toxic environment for female workers, for LGBT people, and these are massively harmful for minority, particularly the youth. Thirdly, we explain that the productivity is going to massively increase on our side. DPM tries to watch this point by saying that people have incentive to work either way. But each margin of how hard you work counts in this debate. For instance, particularly when you, for example, try to explore new clients. Exploring new clients is a lot of difficult job, which means that unless you have strong incentive to do it, you're not going to actually go out of your way, find new clients, try to find new job, and stuff like that, right? So you, you eventually need to have some kind of active incentive to do it, whereas if the stability is the argument, if you just can stay in the company forever, I don't think there's an active incentive to do it. Secondly, we also think that the higher level of due diligence in these companies are very important. For instance, in case of accounting, it is very important that you actively check meticulously multiple different times whether the balance sheet that you and the number that you input in the balance sheet is actually correct or not. Like if you mistakenly put wrong number in a balance sheet and then you provide it to the account, account like provide it to the client, that's like a massive loss for the company as well. Right? We think these are things are things that uniquely change in this way. I want to note that when companies do well, everyone benefits. Because when companies does very badly, it is when companies have to lay off workers, when companies have to hire more people on their side of the house. All right, let's talk about old, unproductive workers. The main push that we get from proposition is this idea of overwhelming pressure up from this. Three responses. Firstly, note that this is a professional view, and this context is very important. Because you, as a professional engineer, a professional lawyer, you probably have graduated through very competitive high school entrance exam, very competitive co university entrance exam, very competitive recruitment processes, which means that you have a coping mechanism to deal with immense amount of competition and stresses already. This doesn't flip the case, this mitigates this, and this mitigation is sufficient in this debate because the end impact is that mental harm is incredibly traumatic. But mental harm, yes, yeah, sometimes might exist, but it's not to the extent you're gonna actually get depressed or anything, that's why the impact is not significant. Go. Okay. I'm, I can assure you that in 15 years you would realize that everybody, including yourself, would age. Is it more equitable that we keep seats for you to go down and, and experience uh, and keep your favorite career, uh, even at the cost of anything else you mentioned? We benefit old people too because the mechanism that Ricky describes of fluidity in the labor market. Under the status quo in places like Japan, if you are old people and get fired by a company, your life is fucked. But, by contrast, on our side of the house, when every single old people have been, uh, are going to be laid off, there is a huge labor market. There is an incentive for recruitment companies to provide platforms that connect companies to old, old people who are seeking for a job. But there is also an incentive for companies who use this up or out system to actively hire old people because the risk of hiring old people is lower. If you hire an old guy and turns out this guy is incompetent, you can just oust them. It's very easy, which means that the old people now have a wide variety of work option on our side because we flipped their case right here. The second thing I have about the overwhelming pressure is this idea that this case is uncomparable. Stability is mentally damaging and crippling for everyone because every day you wake up at 6 and you go to the workplace, do the meaningless job every single day and go back to the home at 11 and then do the same thing again and again. Stability without any change for the future is incredibly mentally damaging and crippling for many. For these reasons, I'm so proud to stand on opposition. May I now welcome the opposition reply to end the opposition case here. The path to victory for opposition is very simple. We demonstrate to you the simple claim that there will be more promotions for younger individuals 
and demonstrate a set of impacts resulting from this. Whereas, the government team gives you the impact of exploitation to which we responded on multiple levels and we heard no response to these responses from the government. So why will there be more promotions for young people? We offer you a set of mechanisms, the fact that you need to force someone out in order to make some people able to go up. They gave us two responses. Firstly, they see that the criteria is going to be very high and reasonable. We point out that this is logically flawed because when the criteria is very high, you fire everyone, your company doesn't work. For you to hire a lot of people at a top level, you have to be able to promote a lot of people from the bottom level, which means the criteria has to be reasonable for this to function. Secondly, and this is the last ditch effort coming from their whip speech, they say old people are going to go down, and that's the counterfactual. So the first thing to point out is, this is just very unlikely to be at the same magnitude as on our side of the house. Firstly, you require these people to voluntarily go down. Maybe some people are going to have family that really needs them, but I would say that the majority of people who live in nuclear families right now don't really need old grandpas looking after their children. So I'm not sure why the majority of people who have been accustomed to this workplace environment where they are you know, given huge amounts of respect are willing to voluntarily surrender that power. That is an unproven, unmechanized premise on their side of the house. Um, furthermore, even if they go down, they still occupy positions of power, right? So you will not go from CEO to like bottom level worker. You will go from CEO to some high level manager. So you're still occupying a high level position for some young worker that can potentially fulfill that position on our side of the house. This is at best mitigation. And finally, I would just know that this mitigation kills their impact as well, because if it is the case that you're going to have people go up or down, then young people will still be pressured into working really hard so that they will not go down. They will be exploited symmetrically. So all of these impacts that they provide are also strongly mitigated if they buy this frame. I would say at the end, it's just unproven and asserted counterfactual that we think you should not buy in this debate. What are the impacts we offered you? Number one, we told you that young people now crucially are able to make more money, and this is important for their life, for anything else they want to achieve. Number two, we told you this creates a better workplace for every single individual, for them to feel more welcome. Number three, we told you there's more productivity, that there's um, crucial roles in the society that these corporations fulfill that might be subjected to things like negligence and incompetence on their side of the house. Finally, we told you there's more fluid labor markets, even for those individuals who indeed become fired. So we benefit not just young individuals, but also relatively old workers as well. Compare this to their impact. The only thing they told us is that there's going to be more exploitation. Just weigh on the level of responsiveness here. Firstly, we mitigated this argument on various levels. We told you that you as a young person probably have coping mechanisms. Their DPM tells you that you as a young person wants to be competitive and likes to feel superior, so presumably that outweighs the harms of being outcompeted in some cases. We told you that there will not be extreme exploitation because of the rational incentives of the company. We told you that there will be symmetric exploitation even in their best case. But we furthermore flip this by telling you that accountability is precisely what prevents exploitation, that respect for those in positions of power because of their age and their seniority is, pre is precisely what enables exploitation. So just weighing on that level of engagement, I think we already win because our impact stands unchallenged whereas their impact has been challenged sufficiently. But finally, even if you buy their impact, you buy that there is more exploitation, we still offered you two levels of weighing down the bench as to why more promotion opportunities for young people, i.e. our impacts, are more important. We told you first of all that you spend the majority of your time in the workforce anyways. So would you rather stay 12 hours in a better workforce or 10 hours in a terrible workforce? I think the way is clear. Secondly, we tell you that this is a professional field and you opted into this. You wanted money. You wanted family. All of these reasons indicate that we clearly win this debate. All right. May now welcome the last speaker to end the quarterfinals here. Okay, thank you, everybody. 
intuition bomb to entertain audience and to, in order to win this debate very seriously. We are all the people. <laughs> then uh, in debating circuit, profit, winning is very important. This means meritocracy, right? Then the young people, I can see young people is strong. We have uh, fight against them lost many times. Tota-kun, Nasatsuchiya-san, many people in this world. I, we could not win. This exhibits the fact. In terms of profit seeking and in terms of meritocracy, those people are likely to be evaluated. This means that in our society, we have to up and to stay. This means that young people, anyway, evaluate it, and those people can change corporate structure. That is a better world. Therefore, we win this debate. Two things to sum up. First of all, seniority system. Secondly, fear of out. First of all, seniority system. Three things to point out. First of all, inconsistency. If they said cooperation with a set reasonable criteria to up and down. If it's so reasonable, how older people will out? I don't know how frequently this will happen, how frequently old people will give the post to their separate house exclusively. This significantly mitigates their unique benefits from their separate house. Therefore, maybe some strong out exists, people pressurize that with exploitation. Secondly, government paradigm, young people can up by the intuition pump, as I already told you, and as I said, good agitation, liberal, they like to debate, or like, they not like to work, or like they have good like value, their value is very compatible to the current situation, like their usage of the technology, the understanding of like AI or something like that, the social connection, something like that. Therefore, they are able to have a better communication with the client, they are able to have everything working, therefore they will act. Therefore, like not necessarily uh, all the people like me will up, we, I will stay. They up, you start with my will my boss. They I will follow. It's okay. <laughs> then, thirdly, the government paradigm, some people want to down, which was not clearly defeated from other side of the house. We already told you, some individual want to respect your life. We already told you, life work balance. You are incentive, you will change. You want to cherish your children. You want to cherish your life. In a sense, if you stay, your responsibility or working environment, the like length of your working will be higher. Therefore, you want to stop that. Therefore, they have incentive to give them a seat. Therefore, for those reasons, there's no crucial data on their side. How to what extent top will be the top will exist on their side? On other side, also top will be top exist. Therefore, like flexible or flexible working system, anyway, down. Delta. In our side, without so much clear, strong pressure of out, people can achieve this. This means that they can enjoy working, they can enjoy happy, like debating, very good moment, then happy. Secondly, like out pressure of out, OPEP try to neutralize this by saying coping mechanism. Extent is different, right? You are hostage to the very financial capacity of you, and you made effort for the good like employment, but this employment betrayed me. Very strong pressure. But that is not different from just have some study, have some video tournament, or whatever. In that kind of situation, strong depression, strong disappointment towards society exists. This will pressurize young people, and not only young people, like middle class people, right? In a sense, this is very problematic. Then, we already told you structural reasons why. Why Haiba exists. There's no not total reputation from the other house, like value judgment difference or like survival bias difference, those kind of things. Secondly, untouched idea, uncontrollability. We told you, because of the uncontrollable reasons, you will be unjustly out. That unjustness and your sphere of betrayal will be strongly higher. In a sense, even if you are like not promoted, still you have money to live, and you can work, then what is so much problematic compared with a very strong disappointment and depression? So, we, because we are old, because we are inferior to them, so we will <laughs> <laughs>